There has long been a conflict over water rights among the riparian countries of the Eastern Nile Basin, Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia. The dispute has escalated in recent years due to a shift in the major balance of power and Ethiopia's decision in 2011 to announce the construction of a major new dam, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. There has been an absence of any agreement with downstream Egypt. The last Egyptian government responded with belligerent rhetoric, whereas the new Egyptian government has embraced trilateral negotiation, including Sudan, that have, in March 2015, resulted in a framework agreement. The crucial leverage regarding Egypt's water security lies with the Blue Nile countries, Ethiopia and Sudan, as the Blue Nile is the main contributor to the Nile River's flow downstream. In fact, about 85% of the overall Nile flow originates on Ethiopian territory. Ethiopia's determination to build a major new dam, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, for hydropower purposes, has been the flashpoint of current conflicts in the Eastern Nile Basin. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has the potential to act both as a driver for conflict but also for cooperation. It provides clear benefits to all three riparian, such as flood control, reduced flood damages and sedimental control. Moreover, with the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, Ethiopia opts for a hydropower expansion strategy on the Blue Nile, and not an irrigation strategy. This is good news for Egypt and Sudan, as hydropower means little actual water withdrawal. However, it also entails potential negative effects on Egypt, such as water scarcity if not carefully managed. The filling regime and operational methods of Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam will affect Egypt in particular through its impact on the operations of its Aswan High Dam, which aims at mitigating the high variability of the Nile River flow. The filling time is estimated to take about 10 years, during which the Blue Nile water flows would be reduced. The 10-year filling time of Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam will likely contribute to fasten sanitisation in Egypt. If it were to take place during a sequence of years in which the Blue Nile flow and the Aswan Dam reservoir itself was low, Egypt might not be able to withdraw sufficient water supplies to meet all of its agricultural needs. After the completion of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, Egypt could run short of water if the operation of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam was not carefully coordinated with that of the Aswan Dam. Lastly, over-year storage facilities upstream in Ethiopia will allow Sudan to increase its water use. While this means new opportunities to develop extended irrigation-based agriculture for the Sudanese, it represents also a new threat for Egypt's current Nile water utilisation. After announcing the dam's construction and with a view to the increasing tensions, the Ethiopian government invited both Egypt and Sudan to form an international panel of experts, IPOE. The panel will solicit understanding of the benefits, costs and impacts of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. The IPOE report recommended two studies to assess the environmental and socio-economic impacts of Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam and was interpreted by both the Egyptian and the Ethiopian government as a vindication of their respective positions. Despite several tripartite meetings between November 2013 and January 2014, no agreement was reached on the implementation of the IPOE recommendations and controversies were evolving around the constitution of a trilateral committee. The change of government in Egypt led to a more conciliatory approach. However, there is still a lot of work ahead. The principles of cooperation have yet to be translated into specific technical agreements on dam management and more in the context of difficult domestic politics for both sides. Neither the Egyptian nor the Ethiopian leader received positive domestic feedback on their agreement. Many historical grievances and distrust remain on the Ethiopian side regarding Egypt. Some Ethiopian journalists assess the declaration of principle as being more in favour of Egypt than Ethiopia. On the other side, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt denounced a high treason. The dispute, although de-escalating, is therefore still ongoing between Egypt and Ethiopia, while Sudan has been acting as a mediator between the two states.